Streamlit is a powerful library for Python that allows us to build interactive web applications for our data dashboards or our machine learning models. We can use it to build apps that are easily deployable to our clients and our users without them having to understand coding or understand the back end. And it just makes it very interactive for them to use the machine learning model or interact with the data in the dashboard. Hey friends, I'm Andy, and if you already knew that, then welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we're going to see how we can spice up our plots by using interactive plots from Plotly within our Streamlit dashboard. This video is part three in my Streamlit series, and if you want to check out the previous parts, then you can do so on my channel. Or if you want to follow along with just this video, then you can find the code that I've used in the previous two videos on my GitHub repository, which is linked down in the description below. So let's get started. So if you've just come to this video looking for Streamlit and interactive plots, then what we're doing is we're building an app based on earthquake data from a Kaggle data set and then we're trying to display it in Streamlit. So if you've missed parts one and two, part one looks at how we can create a Streamlit app and how we can run it so we can then display that data on a single page. Then in part two, we went on to create a navigation bar that you can see here on the screen where we can go to different pages and different sections of our data. So here we've got data statistics, data header and plot. So in this particular tutorial, we're going to look at creating an interactive plot using Plotly. So if you want to follow along, you can download the code from my GitHub repository, and the link is down in the description below, and then you can carry on or follow along with this tutorial. So if you haven't got your app running already, you need to, to run it using Streamlit Run, then your file name. In this case, it's app.py. So I will load in my data set and put it into the, the browse files or the drag and drop place here. And just to confirm the data has been loaded in, I will go to the data statistics and the data header tab and we can see that we've got that information already. So as we're wanting to create an interactive plot, so not only is it going to be interactive in terms of selecting what curves we're displaying on it, it's also going to be interactive. So if you've used Plotly, you'll know that you can hover over certain parts of the plot and you can view the values. You can zoom in or, or zoom out, change the scales, etc. So that is why we're using Plotly rather than matplotlib which we saw in the previous tutorial. So in the previous tutorial, we created this figure here, which is just the depth of the earthquakes versus the magnitude. And we can see that we've got a very static figure and we can't do very much with it. We can't zoom into sections, we can't change the scales, and we certainly can't change the colors. So the first step to get Plotly in, import Plotly express as px. And what we're going to do is come down to this options section where we've got the radio buttons here in our menu. So let's just tidy this up a little bit so we can see it a little bit more clearly. And I'm going to add in an extra menu item in here and we'll call this interactive plot. And then what we need to do is go down to here in our options and this, is just, this just controls the navigation. So I'm just going to copy this line here and we'll say interactive plot and then we need to create a new function as at the moment if I save this and rerun the app if you don't want to rerun each time you can use this always rerun button so that if when you save this file any changes are automatically made on the streamlit app so if I go down to interactive plot at the moment we've still got our matplotlib plot so we need to create a new function up here and we'll call def interactive plot and we'll pass in our data frame. So what we can do is we can we can provide a selection box for the user to um, to select what variables are displayed on what axes of the plot, and we're just going to make a simple scatter plot. And we can call upon we can create two new variables x axis uh, val, val is equal to st dot select box. And then we're going to add a label and we'll call it select x axis uh, value. And then we're going to provide the options, which is going to be options is equal to df dot columns. So we're going to use the columns in the, the data frame as our options within this drop down box. So let's just copy this and paste it below and we'll set this as the y axis. And then we just add in y-axis. So once we've done this, we've now got our function and we've now got our selection box. So we just need to come down here 
and call upon that function interactive plot and then pass in our data frame or df object here. So if I save this and rerun, we can then see that we've got our x-axis values and our y-axis values. So these are all of, the, all of the columns within this particular data set. So at the moment there's no plot showing, so we need to add, we need to tell Streamlit to plot a plot. And we can do that by creating a plot object, which is plot is equal to px.scatter. We then need to pass in the data frame, and then our x-axis is going to be equal to x-axis underscore val, and then our y-axis is going to be equal to y underscore axis val. So we're taking the values that the user selects from here and passing them in as the x and y arguments. So next we need to tell Streamlit to actually plot this data. So at the moment nothing will plot, but if I call upon um, st.plotly chart and then we pass in our plot or our figure object here, we can then save this after a few seconds, we can see that we've got an interactive plot displayed on our Streamlit page. So at the moment we're plotting date versus date, so that's just given us a linear relationship, a one-to-one -one relationship here. So if we want to recreate what we did in the matplotlib figure, we can select our x-axis value and we can select the depth, and then we can select the y-axis, which is going to be magnitude. So we can either select from here or we can start typing. And then here we've got magnitude. So now we've got the same plot as what we have back here. However, when you go away from that page, it doesn't remember the settings that you last selected. So you do need to put them back in uh, again. So I'm gonna select depth and magnitude. And with Plotly, or with Plotly Express, you get this interactive plot. So let's just make this a little bit bigger. And we can then left click and drag on the plot and we can zoom in a shallower depth range. If we want to zoom back out, we can then double click and we can zoom to the whole data set. We can see that if you move the mouse cursor over any of the points, you get the depth and the magnitude value. So to let the user add some color to this plot, we can provide the user with a color picker. So I'm going to say call for our color is equal to st.colorPicker and we'll say select a plot color and when we save that we end up with this little black box here so we can then click on that and we can see that we've got our colors being selected however they're not being applied to the plot yet so we need to update our figure object within Plotly Express and we can do this by typing in plot.update traces and then we need to pass in our marker argument, which is going to be equal to a dictionary. And we'll set the, the color as equal to call, whatever one we select up here. So if I say hit command S and save that, we now have our interactive color picker where we can then select the color that we want for our plot. And we can see that it will update based on that. And there we have it, we've seen how to implement Plotly plots within our Streamlit dashboard. These plots provide a wealth of interactivity for our users compared to using static figures from Matplotlib. So this allows the user to interact with the data and get a deeper understanding of what the data is and how to use it. So if you've enjoyed today's video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more content from this channel, be sure to click that subscribe button and ding that notification bell. So thanks for watching, and until next time, bye for now.